Want the properly good stuff? The critically acclaimed, classy accents across the pond stuff? You know, the best British stuff? When it comes to modern UK dramas, AMC Plus has only the good stuff. Thirsting for revenge? Go on the hunt for a killer and the beast must die starring Jared Harris and Cush Jumbo. Looking for thrilling and literally chilling? Dive into the North Water starring Jack O'Connell and Colin Farrell. It's an AMC Plus original series following an Arctic whaling ship with a murderous psychopath on board. Available ad-free, on demand, and through the platforms you're already on. Sign up at amcplus.com to start watching your next obsession. AMC Plus. Only the good stuff. The Two Johnnies Podcast. The Two Johnnies Podcast. Two Johnnies recording a podcast. Hello, hello, hello. You're welcome to the Two Johnnies Podcast, bringing you all the mayhem and news from the world of the Two Johnnies. I am Johnny B. And I am Johnny Smacks. Welcome to Podcast 175, coming to you like a dramatic ending in EastEnders. Very good, Johnny. On this week's podcast, we discuss intelligence, or debatedly, our lack thereof. He claims when it rained, he could slide faster than any man could run on the hurling field. Noel Furlong will be here with the news. She loves a big mouthful of a full-bodied Italian wine. (laughs) And that sentence also works if you replace the word wine with man. Maureen is here (laughs) with her mystery topic. And as traditional as the cameramen at the Euros somehow always managing to find an attractive female in the crowd, aye, aye. we round off the podcast with our Yurts and Dirts of the week. week. Sorry, John, do you reckon they hire some absolute Jerry <laughs> Hound Dog? Oh, yeah. And then he radios up yeah. by his ultimate ride in row D over. Just <laughs> <laughs> one lad's there on a boner for the whole match. Saucy Spanish, Bjorn, 10 o'clock. <laughs> Beside the lad dressed as a chicken. <laughs> Before, it's not the darts Before <laughs> commencing with proceedings Matters arising from last week's podcast Yes Mr Chairman Well maybe they should pick out some handsome men Yes I agree <laughs> They'd have their hands full at our matches it's Just be like those English fans With the big bellies on them like That's, just a, uh, that's like someone at home going Fuck There's good looking soccer fans too Okay yeah. come on Alright Mr Chairman mm. On last week's episode about robbery and scams Podcast disclaimer, we do not condone any of these, but they are tremendous fun. Anonymous Guard was in touch. I've been a member of the old Garda Shikana for a few years now, and I have come across some stunts. A few years ago, there was money for old clothes at those clothing bins. I saw a family throw a young lad, who I think was about six, into a clothing bin and told him to push the bags out of the bin. It was one of those bins with the anti-theft lids that are usually in car parks beside bottle banks. You know the ones? Yeah. Well, sure, the young lad horsed out all the clothes, but he couldn't reach the top when all the bags were gone. The fire brigade had to open the bin and get him out. (laughs) (laughs) Quite a man, is that? (laughs) Miserable fuckers. I also like how the guard appears to have watched the entire thing (laughs) unfold. (laughs) (laughs) Is this guy... Does this mean he's a whistleblower now? (laughs) It's that that we were on podcast whistleblower by on the inside. Also on the clothes, I heard of people soaking clothes in water before taking them to the cash for clothes shops to increase the weight. Oh, man. Damn. Another one was a lad on the Lewis with a sum up machine walking along hoping to get contact with people's debit cards and peel 15 euro out of them. So a sum sum up machine is the little tap machine for your... That's why uh, I have a a, a sacred... S-E-C-R-I-D, I think, uh, wallet. Is that what they call it? Yeah. You got a little steel. Yeah, boom. we got sent him. And it says the boom is back on him. Thank you, Tiger Flynn Jewelers and Nina. <laughs> <laughs> it sends out little ones with the boom is back. And finally, from my own childhood, we had a 50p, a 50 pence piece with a hole drilled in it and a fishing line attached to it. On certain vending machines, if you timed it right, you could fish the money back out and still get the can of Coke. I'll have to stay anonymous, lads, with the old job and all that, so no mug for me, but hopefully you enjoy. I could have gone on. There's some serious chances out there. Anonymous guard, do go on. Send in the rest. And also, 50 pence piece with a washing line. Are you Oliver Twist? Man, that, 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 I seen that happen in post. You did not see that Slot happen. machines. What, what kind was it? You'd like... Uh, well, it was back in the day now. Right. But I, I, I think at the time, slot machines used to be... You know the 20 pence ones, like in Tremorida? Yeah. Lads used to be able to like, put them in and then whip them out real quick. But a bit, a so line. it would hit the switch to yeah. like you know trigger your goal. Yeah, but then you'd be able to pop it back out. <laughs> <laughs> do you know? Do you know another good one was when you were playing pool. Yeah, like get a fucking 
A4 pad. Right. Rip out the page, scrunch up it, scrunch up the paper, shove it down the pockets. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the balls never go back in. Yeah. You play as many games of pool as you want. But they go in enough so you know they've potted it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just play your game and you can just, balls just stay in the pocket. Up Ross Gray, up right <laughs> <by him. laughs> <laughs> Right, Dan emailed the pot. He said, on the top... Dan! No, oh, Dan. Dan. On the topic... Is, oh, oh. He's not on, seen me. <laughs> on the topic of scams and robberies, I worked as Christmas staff in Debenhams years ago. One time I was in the stock room and a lad I worked with burst in the door behind me. He told me to keep sketch. He then walked over to where the men's underwear was <laughs> stored and proceeded to take off his shoes and slacks. When he was down to just his jocks, he pulled out a load of our man boxers and started putting them on over over his jocks couldn't believe what I was seeing he continued until he had about eight pairs of our man of our manny boxers on him pulled up his slacks waddled out of stockroom like he was wearing a nappy <laughs> slacks are tight at the best of times so you can imagine the sight but the lad finished the shift and got away with it at the time our manny boxers were around 40 quid each so he probably got away with over 300 euro the big jail hole on him going home. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god another one I'm not saying I did this but in some sports shops <laughs> If you know someone working on the inside, right? Predators used to be a great one. So Adidas would release the real predator would be 175 euro, maybe 180 euro, probably like 200 now. But they'd release the fakes for 90. Yeah. What do you mean the fakes? So like they wouldn't be the same quality as the to be like a dumbed down version, an affordable version of the predators for like maybe they'd have a 50 euro one and a 90 euro one, okay. and then the real deal would be 175. That was the way Adidas used to do with predators. Yeah. yeah, other boots did it too. So if you knew someone in the shop, oh, no. you'd say, oh, yeah, I'll take those predators, the 50 euro ones. And they'd make a mistake oh. by putting the wrong ones in the box. <laughs> the expensive ones. Yeah. Yeah. That's why my cousin always had really nice boots. <laughs> and another <laughs> listener. Allegedly. Said, that's a joke. <laughs> and this might not be a joke. Another Maybe. listener said, I knew a lad that worked in the stores in Argos. And he had a list every year of all the excess stock that was going cheap. All you had to do was give him a list of what you wanted. But it had to be small enough to fit in a blanket box. This was because when you went in to get the stuff, you'd give him an order for a blanket box, pay for it, and he'd give you out the blanket box with all your gear <laughs> inside it. That's incredible. Cameras, camcorders, watches, jewellery, etc. John, no, I just want to say... I think that one's definitely robbery. <laughs> that is 100%. But also, I want to know, like, did Argos not clock on the system when it's like, wow, we've sold 200 blanket boxes <laughs> in, like, gory. But then, like, over the road in Wexford Town, we haven't sold one. Yeah. <laughs> what is it with people loving blanket? And also, how does this lad get a, get a kick out of this? Like, he either really likes robbing Argos, or else he's like, give you the blanket box and then after meet me after work and give me like, you know, a couple of cash. Quid. Yeah. Yeah. There's got to be, there's got to be an exchange up. I feel like, you know, that idea of maybe swapping the stickers on what you get from the deli. Yeah. That, that, that's petty. Yeah. But see, he's taking that to the extreme. Oh yeah. Like we're smuggling black pudding. He's got about 10 grand's worth of Hitachi <laughs> in a blanket box. You know what I mean? <laughs> Too far. Smuggling shit in the country. But yeah. thanks for sending that in. That was funny. Dean was in touch. When I was 18, I was working in a petrol station part time when, when in college. We all did that. By On my third shift, a lad came in with a knife and cleared the till. No way. I had only been in the shop three days, so I had a clue what to be at. I didn't even know how to press the no sale change button to open up the till, so I proceeded to try and scan something to open the till when your man held out the knife. He was going mental, but the lad I was working with <laughs> eventually came over and managed to open up the till. He grabbed the cash and bombed it. We were fear shook, but no one was hurt. After we'd given our statements, the detective basically told us we were a bit fucked because the video couldn't ID your man and it didn't get a clear shot of the reg. Anyways, me and the lad I was working with decided the only thing we could do was get steamed. Next day, the detective gave me a ring to come into the station. For a second, I had pure fear, but then remembered, oh yeah, your man robbed the shop. <laughs> Apparently your man that robbed us had taken a picture with the driver of the car with the exact amount of cash stolen and posted it on Facebook. Ah, go away. The guard's fake Facebook page took a screenshot and it ended up being one of the main pieces of evidence against him. What a simpleton. What a sap. Oh my God. He is. <laughs> but the funny thing, imagine your man's like, Kimmy, and he's like, oh, oh, one sec, I have to, I have to scan this chungum. He's like, oh, they gave me the money. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Damien emailed I have a good story About scabbing and robbing maybe 
I would like to know your point of view on who was right and wrong. Oh, good. This goes back to the n- early noughties. I was around 13 or 14 at the time, and I'd go into my small local bookies with my brother. I was obviously losing and noticed the system they had in place was not very advanced. <laughs> I was also breaking the law by gambling <laughs> underage, yes. So one day I checked the results of the snooker, and I went in and put on an accumulator already knowing the results. My plan was to act shocked when I went in to collect if they told me the games had already been played before I placed the bet. Instead, just as I thought they would, they said, well done, and paid me out. I was a winner. (laughs) So I decided to go bigger and got my friend in on this. At the time, my friend was going to a different school and used to get dropped off in town. This was probably before mobile phones. So he would get to a payphone, ring my house phone after I got in from school, and I would tell him the results that day. Football, snooker, tennis, darts, cricket, you name it. We knew it. BBC Teletext was a godsend. Page 302 for football, if I'm not mistaken. This went on for months. We were up a few thousand at this stage. Then my friend said he wanted a big one and he wanted to get out. I remember I didn't want to do it as we were going nicely, just winning small amounts and keeping under the radar. So my friend went for it and (laughs) did the big one. So I had to do it too, just in case we got away with it. Young and naive, I guess, but this is where we got caught. The owner noticed the time and had and looked over the bets in the previous few months. He told us he was going to the guards unless we paid him back. So we gave him back whatever we had, and that was it. Looking back now, we were underage, and I shouldn't have been getting served. So we should never have given him back the money, right? I still don't think we did anything wrong. So in my opinion, you definitely did something wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, that's up to the bookies to cop that. Well, okay, this is the worst bookies in Europe, to be fair. (laughs) Yeah, but the old bookie systems... Were bad, like well, how are they so? How the people are they there so didn't give a, what? What I used to always chance was if there was brothers or players with the same name. What? So let's say like you know Liverpool were playing like Newcastle, yeah, and they have a Cisse, and at the time Liverpool had like you know Gibral Cisse paying for them, so I'd be like first goal Cisse, <laughs> <laughs> and they did did like the, the staff would never cop. Yeah. So like when you, if one of them scored first, like you you just doubled your chances. You weren't yeah, winning. Yeah. You weren't buying money, like you know, as the boys were doing. Did it come in for you a bit? The odd time, like yeah, you'd be hoping, you'd be looking through. Like Tim Cahill used to be another good one. Yeah. And Gary Cahill would like you know, so their teams would have to play each other. Obviously, like you just stick it down, like first goal, Cahill. <laughs> Never stick down the price. Never give it away. I was talking to a mate of mine who ran a bookies, and he said uh, the most common one would be somebody'd come in to place a bet on a dog race. And they would do a, the slow count. So they'd put the slip up on the counter. And the staff would just process it straight away. Bang. The guy would slowly count his money at the counter while listening to the race in the background. And if it was sounding like the dog was going to lose, he'd be like, oh, I must go to the ATM and run out the door and never be seen again. Fuck. So just as the race starts, he'd go, mm. yeah, 10 on number three there. And you're sure, we're behind the counter. We'll just do it. And then should he be taking 30 seconds putting the money on the counter? Yeah, I, there's going to be a lot of people trying that one out the minute. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. telling you, I've given it away, but I've given it away. Uh, Boobs. Some, something more wholesome. Titties, tadas, bazangas, we breastfeeding. Were talking about breastfeeding last week? Yes, Caroline said, My baby is nearly 10 months old and I'm exclusively breastfeeding. We're exclusively on Spotify. <laughs> Caroline's exclusively breastfeeding. Not completely by choice, though, she says. He. He is my fifth baby and point blank refuses to take a bottle or a dummy. That's a dody for those of us down the country. A dodo. Yeah. Is that what you call it? Oh a man, don't start now. This is bum burger all over again. A dody. A dody. A dummy? A dody. I called it a dummy. A doody, we would have called it too. A doody? Yeah, I know. Oh, honestly, God, I swear to God. If people. <laughs> a look, pacifier, as they r- say in America. Yeah, write in. What is it? Let us know. Uh, Caroline, back to Caroline, she says, I've tried every type of bottle and teeth there is going, but to no avail. My mum always said I was the same and just went on to the, a cup at nine months. So she was always telling me to introduce a bottle early so you're not stuck, which I did with the others, but in this case, it didn't work. I can't even express and leave bottles ready to have a drink and pump and dump. I, I mean, whoever heard of a baby who wouldn't take a bottle? And that is odd. Lockdown kind of suited me because I didn't miss out on too much, but now I'm turning down nights out left, right and centre because I can't leave him for any length of time. Obviously, he needs the ditty. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love him and it's just for a short time, so I really don't mind. I heard you were saying about being two and I don't intend on doing it that long, but I've no idea how I'm going to wean him off. He still wakes up several times a night 
and it's like I'm a human dummy. I've tried sneaking a dummy in his mouth, but he's having none of it. As regards being sore, it is initially in the very beginning, but once you've established feeding and got the correct position and latch, it's not. He also has teeth now, and he somehow knows not to bite. <laughs> Maybe because the first time he did, I screamed and it scared him. <laughs> like with a dog, you have to be like, ah, ah. <laughs> Regarding my husband, he doesn't mind, or if he does, he doesn't say it. On the plus side, we've saved a small fortune on baby formula. Do you know... That's why I've never heard. Of a lad, he just refused and take the bottle. Yeah. You also, want- I had a doty slash duty until I was like fucking eight. I'd say. <laughs> Pretty sure I had one for my first Holy Communion. <laughs> my mother was like, ah, it was just a habit you had. You'd come in from school and you'd have a bottle of tea and, and your doty. I was like, fucking hell. <laughs> I was having my communion. Still going around like a baby. No wonder I'm such a big... Child now <laughs> Jesus Christ Yeah well you know You shot yourself until 11 But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> St- Still pissing the bed <laughs> Potty <laughs> Go wee wee Yeah I, I was um, Pissing the bed Late in life Were you? Not, no like, I was joking I was, was You like, fucking idiots <laughs> About 8 or something Yeah to get like Fucking mm-hmm. Plastic sheets in there All that shit Yeah it's terrible It's such a heavy sleeper You know me I'd sleep anywhere Yeah yeah I remember staying over one of my friends' house and it was I jumped on his bed and it was like it was like tin file. I was like, what's going on? He was like, nothing. Yeah, I know you'd be so embarrassed yeah, as a kid. Know, yeah, you would. We used to try that thing, you'd like get like a scarf and, and tie a big knot at the back to discourage you from sleeping on your back. Mm. No way. Yeah, so you'd be more tennis ball job. You'd be less likely to, to pee the bed if you're sleeping on your side. So as a kid. I st- I stopped by about ten, I'd say. Cheers. I've heard of lads like on the gat. Yeah, drinking and yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> remember walking into this to house party on the, when the boys were like naked on the couch and he was just pissing. <laughs> like a proper stream of it. He was on the side and he was just, he was fast asleep and he was just flowing out. <laughs> someone else, someone else is asleep on the ground now. I was like, I'm not even saying I'm here. I was like, I'm just going, I'm just going about my own business. Going for a chicken or This poor lady, um, how about rubbing like chili powder on your nipples? Like, you know, it worked when I wanted the dog to yeah. stop eating the dahlias. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> or if she was to get something... Surely just starve him. He'll fucking... He'll take a bottle in, he'll have no choice. That would, you know... That's tough. That is tough. Tough um, off. Maura? Well... You we'll you get, have tits. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't fed any babies. But I fed baby calves. So when there are some of them are a bit reluctant to take the teeth, you just kind of rub honey on it. Yeah. And then the the sucky calves love that. And so maybe try a dummy with honey on it. Well, there you go, Caroline. I um, don't know if you've tried that. But if that works, let us know because we're geniuses. <laughs> and we'll be charging for any more advice. Uh, phobias, John. We had been talking about phobias on a previous podcast. Alan emailed to say, I have a strange one for you. What's the weirdest, the weirdest phobia you've ever heard of? My biggest phobia is plastic food containers and Tupperware. Even typing the word turned my stomach. It's a nightmare. I gag and I'm turned <laughs> off food if I see someone using it. Chinese takeaways are a no-no unless they use the foil containers. But even then... <sighs> I know behind the scenes the food is stored in the plastic ones. If I know a pub, restaurant or takeaway uses them, I just stay away from it. I help out with everything around the house and do my fair share of washing, cooking, cleaning, ironing, hoovering, painting, all that stuff. I actually like cleaning and washing. But don't ask me to empty the kids' lunch boxes or drink bottles into or out of the dishwasher. My stomach turns. Secretly, I rinse whatever I use under the boiling tap if it was washed in the dishwasher with the plastic containers. He says, notice I didn't use the T word. Tupperware. Okay. okay, plastic containers, right. Touching it makes my skin crawl and I always scrub my hands with hot water after I touch it, but I generally try to avoid touching it. When the kids were babies, it was a nightmare for me with the bottles, etc. Thank God they're older now and don't need them. Is that the strangest phobia you've ever heard of? Alan. Yes, it is. Yes, <laughs> yes it is. It's absolutely the strangest thing I've ever heard of. He'd hate I those lads. I feel so sorry for him. Do you know the lads prepping for the gym? Yeah. Oh, they're oh, his yeah. enemies. He hates bodybuilders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he hates bodybuilders. But like that man has never had the pleasure of eating a chow mein, like, you know, from a nice plastic container. I feel like he's really missing out. Sure, in America, don't they come in the car- A lot of times now they come in the cardboard ones. Cardboard, yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to go to a Kyoto by. What about the glass containers? Yeah, they're fine. Like, I, uh, I, don't, I don't have a problem with Tupperware. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have a lot of Tupperware and plastic collections in my house. So I, I don't want to say the T-word anymore if it's going to throw Alan off when he's listening. But you know, that is, that is phobia. 
I've ever heard of. Hundred percent. Like even the what if he was playing sport, would he not be able to drink out of like you know the the plastic, the, the, plastic the squeezy bottles like the Luke said sports say uh, like he might have a glass bottle. Our mate Sparrow turned up for hurling training with a glass bottle. Yeah, but that's because <laughs> he just he just loves fucking. Or he's retro man. He's either retro. I think Jay chores into the environment he's as well. Yeah. yeah. But it's a proper old school glass bottle. Like the last, we're like, what the fuck? Do you see those shops now where you can go in with your own glass containers and like scoop in your own pasta and rice and stuff? So there's yeah. no, no packaging. It's very expensive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. If you want to help the environment or be healthy, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. Mm-hmm. He needs to go to Cork, get chips and mushy peas in a newspaper. Okay. I mean, how, how do you even like go about fixing a phobia such as that? Like, I don't know. Therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, let us know how it goes. Thanks, Alan. Hurling abroad, Eamon was in touch regarding David on an earlier podcast with the Shinty in Cornwall. I'm a player manager for a hurling club in Oxford and was taking hurling training there on Saturday. Oxford GA and Shinty actually share a ground and they had a match going. So after hurling training, I headed over to watch. They noticed the hurling in my hand and asked if I could play as a ringer. A very quick registration was done and onto the pitch I went with a shinty stick in my hand. Class. I get the rules explained to me by this lad with an Irish accent and I play the match. Get on grand and ask this lad his name after. It turns out this lad is none other than David himself from the podcast. Not David! David who sent in his correspondence a couple of weeks ago. He says he's raging he didn't send in any website for the shinty but if you Google Cornwall shinty you'll get sorted. Also any Irish lads around Oxford you're welcome to play hurling you can't bait a bit of self promotion thought you would enjoy how small a world it really is with the Irish community in England so that's it two boys met who have the, the common love of this podcast true the podcast and played it played a bit of shinty now they're becoming close personal friends man <laughs> I wouldn't chance the shinty myself yeah. I'd have much too much I'd way too much respect for my legs and yeah. fingers <laughs> those lads are hard as they I think hurling's bad that's crazy what occurred to me is I, I look at Shinty and be like Jesus they're pulling all over the place I don't know what I fancy that And that must be How other people feel about hurling Yeah Or how it's Particularly junior hurling That we <laughs> yeah. play That is Almost as dangerous as Shinty The ball is optional Yes On Well feminism But oh, the, wow. this, is a, this is a great story Don't switch off No <laughs> Everybody needs to hear this story Una emailed to say, this is a story I've been wanting to send for some time. It's been told to so many of our friends and friends of friends since it happened that being a feminist has become our urban slang for a certain act. My friend Ashling was seeing a nice man she quite liked. He was a bit older than her. He's 33 and had a very good job. So she thought she's finally blagged herself somebody with their shit together. They'd been on a few dates and everything was going really well. She'd invited him to stay for the weekend and this time things got interesting. When they were having the sex, she noticed that there was very little foreplay for her. But he certainly wasn't shy about asking for himself. This happened again the next few times and she asked us for our advice as to how she could bring this up. What I should mention was Bridgerton had just aired at the time and most of the female and probably male population were enamoured by the Duke and his cunnilingus capabilities. Yeah, he was some anti eight box. Was he? (laughs) So, not No, by by even sugar corn and he was really good. And not the Tupperware kind. (laughs) So... (laughs) So we Alan's ju- like, oh, <laughs> don't say it again. Anyway, they're watching Bridgerton. So we joked that as they watch it together, she should make suggestive comments at those particular moments, which she did. The next time they were having the sex, he finally went down south. She was thrilled that her hints had been finally picked up. However, this was to be short-lived. She had what can only be described as 30 seconds of the most disappointing oral sex of her life before he came back up and proclaimed, Did you like what I learned from the Duke? Wow. Mm. In utter shock, Ah. but not wanting to be (laughs) discouraging. Not everybody can be great at Everton, right? She agreed. He had genuinely tried to copy a fictional character? However, it only gets worse. During the post-sex cuddle, he stated that he must be a feminist now. <laughs> As that was, I quote, a very feminist thing to do. He was, in fact, deadly serious about this. 
So we all put our hands together for such a hero, the man who puts to suffer in suffragettes, who gives Countess Markovich a run for her money, the man who thinks he is a feminist for going down on a woman unsuccessfully for 30 seconds. To top it all off, when she rang to end things, he said he always felt something was missing. Yeah, lad. An orgasm. <laughs> oh, now that Ouch. is brilliantly written as well. <laughs> Thank you. Boys, there's no point holding on to the ball if you're not going to score. Yeah, live it off. Uh, who's going to get the two Johnnies? I just want to say, this This is very important. Yeah. That's a very important piece of correspondence. Or a, or a pleasure. For a lot of our young men listening, you know what I mean? All right, some people are natural. Mm. You know what I mean? Well, it could be the... You know. The Pal Horgan of orgasms are there. <laughs> All right, okay. The Tom Brady of finger and whatever. Okay. But <laughs> yeah. for, the, for the rest of us, don't be afraid to have that chat. Yeah. Get ask, good. Ask her, you know, how was that? What, you know, like, like you're at a restaurant. Listen. Everyone okay for you here? Every- <laughs> you know, the, the, did you like when I put on the Chinese accent in the middle there? That, yeah. that do for you? No? Just character stuff? I was trying to be exotic, you know? Every, when it comes to sex, everyone has to go, like some people start at intermediate and, and manage to get up senior. Yep. And some people start at junior B. Yep. But if you don't you know, try and The words of Miley Cyrus, it's all about the climb, that. <laughs> climb. Yeah. It's all about the climb. And the lick out. Uh, who's going to get the Two Johnnies podcast mug sponsored by KC Sports who sell all the lovely Two Johnnies merchandise? See Two Johnnies.ie if you want to get yourself some. Who's going to get it, lads and ladies? Who's tomorrow? Like uh, I, poor Caroline hasn't gotten a full night's sleep in 10 months thanks to her, thanks to her hungry child. But I do like Una's story and it was well written. So Yes, I, I Caroline, I empathise with you. Let's try the honey. Let us know how it goes. Um, it's hard to look past Una. Yeah. Go on, Una. Go on, you good thing. Thanks Una, for that. feminism is alive and well. If you email podcast at the two johnnies.ie with all your details, Mara, get the mug sorted out. She's, she's living in England, is she? Uh, no, I think she's in Dublin. Good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, weekly roundup, John. Yes, we're out and about, Johnny. We're life on the road. What's been going on this week? We're back. We were filming a TV show. Um, for the for, We're filming our first episode. Yeah, we can't week. say too much, but we can not say that we... Got to stay in a hotel. <sighs> what a what a rush. Ooh. What a rush. We had dinner in a hotel restaurant. It was mental sitting at the bar. Man was like, quietly have the drink. I was like, oh my God. I'm, I'm so, so emotional never, right now. I never thought you'd ask. I'm so emotional. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you one thing about hotel staff. I had a, had a pint in front of me. Mm. There was oh. definitely a mouthful left. Ooh. And he took, he took the glass. They took one off me. You know, the last pint I had. Yeah. Two mouthfuls left. I know. I swear to God, you one swipe then. I was trying to make eye contact with you to be like, say something. Because <laughs> you know, obviously I wasn't going to say anything. I don't complain to staff. But they were walking past. And because I said to him, it's like, yeah, we'll, we'll get two more. And so as he was kind of leaving our table, he just picked up my pint with a nice, cool mouthful left in it. Yeah. And he was gone. You'll never get that mouthful back. I'll never get it back. You'll miss that for the rest of your days. Yeah. You'll wake up in the middle of the night and go, oh, I wonder what that mouthful would have been like. <laughs> I wonder what the mouthful is doing now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was outrageous. Food Who, was nice. Whose mouth is it in now? <laughs> we had a nice someone mazaman. A, someone else is drinking my mouth. <laughs> we had a nice mazaman. And then... At the end, your mom's like, will you have dessert? I said, no, but we're going to have a load of pints. <laughs> I didn't want him going away anywhere, you know. I didn't want him trying to give away our table. But the weird thing is, with the rules in that, we were like, are we allowed when we finish our dinner to still sit here and have a pint? It was, you know, a grey area. We did have pints. Uh, it was lovely. Nice to be out and about. Not much, because filming is very tough. <laughs> yeah. It's very difficult. Yeah, hurry up and wait, boy. That's, that's, so much that's, waiting that's, around. That's television. Yeah. Be there for nine o'clock. And then it's like ten, <laughs> ten past ten. You get your microphone on and then at 11 o'clock you might say a line. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, fuck. Shredding. I do hear of actors reading books and stuff while they're waiting around now. Yeah. I must try it someday. We, we don't have to though. We love interacting with people when they just show up Waterford. Yeah. <laughs> so th- thank you. Fun Thanks. boys. Thanks for that. Yeah. People taking photos of us. I got sent like six photos of us this week. Hey. Just eating. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's, One oh, for the mantelpiece. <laughs> oh, it's nice. Uh, and just a word on the Patreon podcast. That is staying where it is and it'll be still coming out every Thursday only to the Patreon subscribers. On last week's extra podcast, number 65, Johnny B opened up during our listener hotline. I guess I used to lie a lot in the wedding band. What kind of shit was you saying? You look well. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the <surprise>, <laughs> No. 
They were all lovely brides. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on average, uh, percentage now. How many? How many? Uh, like, how many brides? Yeah. What were good looking? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, beauty's in the eye of the beholder Yay, go on Johnny boy. Intelligence Albert Einstein once said The difference between stupidity and genius Is that genius has its limit With this in mind We've decided to discuss intelligence How is it defined? How does being street smart matter more than being book smart? And how intelligent are all of us? Not very so This came up because Smacks reckons Street smart is more important than book smart Yeah bro do you know what I mean? Define street smart. Street smart is like knowing how to handle yourself in general situations, getting shit done. Street smart is life. Book smart is like... Books. Do- being down the pub, giving out facts that no one gives a fuck about. That's what book smart is. Have you ever had a drink with someone who's book smart? When they're like, yeah, no, I think you're wrong there. I think that was actually 1966 that happened on the 8th of May and they give you a quote. Well, it's something like sports anoraks when they get into a quiz. Yeah, but like, you know, time and place for that. I would rather be just like, yeah, sometimes I'll tell lies. But aren't I entertaining? That's, no, street, <laughs> street smart. When I grew up, the thing was like, he'd buy and sell you that lad. Right. Right, he's got no job. Right, he's not got much going for him in life, but he'd buy you and sell you. Yeah, but wouldn't he be better off if he was book smart than he was a doctor? Nah. <laughs> nah, financially maybe, but I mean in this, in the, in life. He'd no be doubt. less respected on the streets. Yeah, no, when I mean street smart now, I don't mean like fucking easy selling drugs in Compton. Like, I'm talking <laughs> just like being clued in, like. I think if you're street smart, you have to have an, a strong accent. My mother believes anyone anyway street smart. Like. Does she? Yeah, like Abby, you tell her something she got in a test, and she's like, yeah, but she wouldn't, you know, she fucking, she won't last on the street. <laughs> <laughs> just Carlito's way. Yeah, you <laughs> fucking, you know, you gotta have that street smart. Like. I grew up in town, so I, I just naturally had it. Oh, are you street smart? Yeah. Well I'm, so, so, well, I'm not book smart, so I have to be something. <laughs> well, give me an example of your street smartness. Like, what are you talking about here? Um, I'm quick thinking. Are you? And quick talking. Are as, you? Uh, like, well, look at, the, look at the job I do. So, like, let's say I'm working and someone's like, um, you know, someone's getting in trouble for something and they try and blame me. <laughs> I'm so good at like, oh, bang, I'll make up something on the spot and just get over. Like, that's street smart, quick thinking. I'm also emotionally intelligent. Well, no, no, no. Don't try and change the subject here. Yeah. You mean you're good at schmoozing and shit talking? Yeah, good at shit talking, good at chatting, good at like just being out there, fitting in, good at fitting in. You, you know are I mean? quite good at. Yeah, but, the, like but that's you. it. Yeah. You know, yeah, people like me. That's that's. A, I'd rather people liked me for me than being like, oh, he will. He's really successful, but he's got the personality of a fucking mandarin orange. Yeah, <laughs> that that to me is important. Give me, give me. I put this way: if we're implying someone. You know what I mean? I'd rather someone who can handle themselves and can solve problems like, you know, and, and is a bit of crack. Yeah. Like, you know, Neil's sound. Why that's, Neil that's, that's 50% why he got the gig. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just letting you know. Just letting you know. I know your book's smart too. Don't fucking show off. <laughs> right? I know you have it all. Don't, don't be showing off over there. He's, he's in the corner just going, yeah, fucking what a dumb prick, Max. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, I do think that's important. I think being so-called street smart is more important Earlier in life True Yeah true Growing up So let's say We go to school together And you're street smart mm-hmm. And I'm book smart Yeah Okay Hypothetical situation yeah. Obviously here I <laughs> couldn't read in school So <laughs> <laughs> So You know After the leaving cert I become a doctor Right Right and Yeah what am I doing uh, You didn't do your leaving cert You kind of You just went out Well the then street. I'm just an idiot No 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 You went to the streets And you hustled Right Okay, this, this sounds like the plot of like 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying. So you're, you're a street smart. Right. You're wheeling and dealing. You're buying and selling things and people. Okay, right. Metaphorically, hopefully not really. <laughs> okay, not I'm not like, trafficking people. Yeah, yeah all right. Okay. He buy and sell you that. Head. Oh, he's a human trafficker. Okay. <laughs> no, right. So you, you get sick, right? Right, okay. And like you probably bullied me in school or whatever because I was book smart. Okay. I pull up outside your gaff and me jag. And then I go up to your door and be like... Oh, is, is Smacks there? Like, you know, you had a cool nickname because you were a street smart. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm probably just still like John O'Brien. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's me. It's, it's Dr. John o- Bernard. O'Brien, yeah. And then they're like, oh, yeah, he's in here. He's real sick. And then I pull down my slacks and I take a big poo on your doorstep. And I'm like, you haven't got health insurance. Fuck you. Yeah. And I just drive away because I'm rich and book smart. 
Yeah, but you're a prick, you see. That's what I'm saying. That's why I bring it back to like, yeah, but people, I die because you won't treat me. Yeah. And I get like a hero's funeral. It's not much good to you when you're dead. Yeah, but like, I can look down on it from like, you know, whatever fucking pedestal I'm on when I die. Your street funerals, they're like a load of lads letting off gunshots. Google Street View, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm watching it on Google Street View. Bonfires for you. And everyone's like, oh, that prick, John O'Brien. Yeah. Killed him because he shat in his porch. And like, nobody likes that guy. I'd rather be liked when I'm here, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm all about, street smart. This is the plot of every movie. It's like a book smart kid transfers to a tough school. Yeah. And the street smart guy like takes him under his wing. Coach Carter. Yeah. Yeah. It's Coach Carter. Kind Life of the in betweeners just... too. Yeah. Briefcase Mong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's exactly yeah, it. That's Will exactly. Was, was book smart. Yeah. And the boys were a bit street smart. Yeah. And yeah. Coach Carter, he like his son was book smart. Was book smart. And then he moves and all the boys were obviously, you know, shooting it up and shit. Okay, so so that's it's. A but out of the in betweeners, then I didn't see the last movie, so I don't know. But like, who do you reckon went on to have the best life? Probably Simon. So is he kind of in the middle? Yeah, the most balanced that's character. A, that's what I'm saying. That's that's you want to be a bit in the, like I'm not saying here don't study or like don't do well for yourself. I'm saying <laughs> that, but I'm saying have it. To me, street smart is cop on. Right, it's a cop on to be like I can have the crack, but I know where the boundaries are, and I know I know those lines I can't cross. And sometimes I'll walk close to them. In what way? But like, when you're a young lad, yeah. and someone's like, oh, I'm going fucking throwing eggs. Yeah. Right? You're like, oh, fuck, okay, right, okay, I, I go throwing eggs. And then if someone's like, I'm going throwing eggs at the cop shop. <laughs> that's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So like, my sense is like, oh, but oh, well, I'm throwing all the odd egg. Like, you know yeah, I'm throwing I mean, I mean, eggs. Not, yeah, but I'm not throwing them at the cop shop. That's no. stupid. Whereas other people are like, oh, yeah, they go and do, do it. Do you want to throw eggs? Yeah. Do you want to go sell gear? No. No. That's yeah. what I mean. Okay. Street smart. Right. We've. <laughs> Mar, you want to weigh in on this? You happy with Street so smart is just cop on. That's what uh, it is. Yeah, I think there is a difference. Being street smart, smart in younger life is definitely beneficial because I grew up in like a small little village. Like, so. Yeah. I wasn't very street mart, smart as a. Street mart. <laughs> street mart. <laughs> I knew more about marts than I did about street mart. Street, yeah, street, street smart. smart. But I remember there was this girl who her grandmother lived um, near the ball alley in Drumconnors and she'd come every summer. She was from Dundalk. Oh, so she knew it all. Dundalk. She knew about shifting. She knew about makeup. I remember I specifically made my mother buy me the same tracksuit as her. Because ah! I was just like, she was in it like you know she yeah. knew the style I didn't have a clue she was in like, town yeah <laughs> yeah you want to be the person at the back of the bike shed telling people about sex <laughs> <laughs> although a lot of the time that those people are like the people who actually end up not being able to have sex because they, they implode they peak early in life but no ju- just on the street smart thing I do mean like general awareness and I mean that awareness of yourself and like the people around you like yeah. Sometimes people who are really intelligent lack that personality to, to, that they're unable to even bring their, their own personality out and then they're unable to read a room. Mm. So I'm talking about like street smartness. Like, yeah. You're going in somewhere like, you're going into a job interview, you're like, okay, right, I'm street smart, I read the room now. What's, I, you know, you get vibes off you, whereas other people are just like, I'm so intelligent. Yeah. That's just going to get me through a lot of stuff. There was one guy I know when he got 600 points in his leaving cert, but like if I went over to talk to him, he went pew thread yeah. like couldn't yeah. function at all like mm. and like I think he went on to study medicine so hopefully he upgraded his social skills because oh, it's bad if he's a doctor and like he's got <laughs> and he's just going red every time a patient comes do you reckon in. he just slips, slips them a note saying you're fucked <laughs> like, yeah. I can't communicate yeah. with you slips them a note just says I got 600 points <laughs> he's still dining out over that it's not good <laughs> <laughs> different types of intelligence this is a big thing mm. They've broken it down here. What have we got? Naturalist. Understanding living things. and Reading nature. I guess that's farmers, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, fair enough. I, I was just supposed to say that was the one thing I wasn't great at in, 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 in this. is like in, Don't have much. You hate getting your hands dirty. Yeah, I don't, yeah I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a nature guy. You know, yeah. Spatial awareness. I'm pretty good at packing the boot. Oh, my God. Yeah? <laughs> Mate of mine, H Fresh. Mm. Used to be in the band us. Incredible at packing the back of the van. Yeah, that's a skill. Sp- spatial awareness was amazing. That's a skill, man. That is that is that is a real like, body bodily kinesthesia. No, kinesthetic. Kinesthetic. You know, that's, like- that's coordinating your mind with your body. A lot of time, like up until maybe two years ago, my body pretty <laughs> much done what my brain told it to do. Now, 
not so much. Yeah, but there's different things. Like some people say, my dad has great hands for mm. like making things. No, can't dance. Yeah, good hands, bad feet. Okay, he he's got half of this. Okay, he's half bodily. <laughs> yeah, but I'd say like you have good hands and you can play a sport. You can move. You you're you mobile. Yeah, see me dance. Really. Yeah, <laughs> musical is another personality. Or sorry, another um, type of intelligence. Type of intelligence, musical intelligence. I'm so jealous of people who have perfect pitch. Huh. You know, you play a note and they're like, "Oh well, that's a C sharp." Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous of people who have reasonable pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous of people who know what pitch is. <laughs> Seen the movie. <laughs> um, Rhythm is so funny. Yeah, to, but people clapping out of time does my head in. Oh my god! I, I can clap in time. Just get it. Yeah, it's. Particularly like when people clap along to songs that shouldn't be clapped to. Yes. That's my problem. It's like you're playing a rock song on the late late and the audience are like. Yeah. They're like, no, you can't clap to this. You know what I mean? Wait until Daniel O'Donnell comes on. You can clap to him. Well, but the big issue in a nutshell is clapping on the one or on the two. Yeah. Yeah. So country music is like. Um, ba, um, ba, um, ba. Boom, chick, so you should chick. be clapping on the snare. But then if you were to do Anything else don't clap Sometimes we're playing a song Like when, like when I play for the county Oh yeah And do. people are clapping on the kick drum When I grow up I'm going to play county yeah. Which is the exact opposite so what you want, Of where yeah. we want you to clap yeah, yeah. Logical or mathematical I know so many people Who are so intelligent But totally illogical Yeah like, that's, that's, You see that's being book smart <laughs> Give an example like What do you mean? My missus is very intelligent, right? Scientist. Sees a handbag online. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't need it. Totally illogical. <laughs> totally illogical. No. Well, maybe the handbag's really nice. It, see, there you go. <laughs> I, would say, I would say I'm quite illogical like that as well. Just make stupid fucking decisions. But you know. Ah, yeah. I kind, of, I kind of do it as a form of self-torture. <laughs> <laughs> Like back in the day, like well, if I had fucking twenty quid left, like and it was a T-shirt that was nice enough for twenty quid in River Island, I'd be like, I'll go without the food. <laughs> totally illogical, and obviously maths, you know, didn't come into that either. Like I've always been poor at maths, really. Yeah, but like when it comes to accounts and money, <laughs> like that's the different thing. If someone said, "Oh, do that equation," mm. I'd be like, "Oh yeah, okay," and then I'd look at it and like I do it. We'll get on to it in a second, but like. I'd be like, oh, oh, fuck that, fuck that. Fuck, I'm not fucking doing that. Whereas if someone said, here's your money, and then I'd be like, whoa, that's not right. And then I'd be able to like quip up and match someone and be like, there's money missing here. Like. So when it's money and something you matter about, I can do it. But if it's just a general equation and I know there's nothing in it for me, I won't do it. Interpersonal, John. Sensing people's feelings and motives. I think that's, I think that's probably my strongest type mm. of in- intelligence. Yeah? Yeah. I could be completely wrong now. You'll be like, no, you're, you're what? actually a wanker. <laughs> what do you mean? If I come in here yeah. within around five seconds, yeah. if you're in bad form, I've got clocked. Yeah. And I say to you, like, well, what's wrong with you? Like, and then uh, I'm always right. Mm-hmm. Now, on the other hand, when I have a problem, I tell everyone. So yes. no one has <laughs> to sense it, um, which is a whole other thing. I will let you, honestly, everyone will know. Um, but I think I'm always good at like, just copping that something's off or dealing with other... I'm better at dealing with other people's problems than I am my own problems. Okay. If someone came to me with a problem, I'd be like, I'll, I'll give you a hand. And then like, my house could be on fire. And I'd be like, no, I'm giving one the boys to dig out. <laughs> <laughs> like, and he'd be like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm out here, like, I'm fucking painting the back wall of my mother. She's like, what? <laughs> you won't do that at home. It's like, oh, yeah, I do stuff for other people. Like, you know what I mean? So. Uh Intrapersonal Understanding yourself What you feel And what you want Yeah I, I'd be try, I, This is not an interview For you John So yeah. I do <laughs> No I, 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 I feel <laughs> To hit back at your Previous inside of intelligence yeah, I'm good at out, out so, but Inside now You're fairly measured In terms of like Intrapersonal Like you know What you're into And you, you're very like Okay Yeah I'd say you know Yourself better than any of us know ourselves be my feeling Maura do you know yourself I hope so <laughs> Jesus we're pretty fucked if you don't like you know <laughs> no I'd I wouldn't be probably I'd still make bad decisions like you know <laughs> probably don't, like you know I'd don't, we yeah. don't we all yeah don't we all the last one is linguistic finding the right words to express what you mean <sighs> yeah uh, you'd imagine we all have that the line of work we do 
if we're not able to talk, <laughs> we're definitely <laughs> all doing the wrong thing in life at the moment. I know, but you still can't pronounce pulchritudinous, so. Yeah, yeah, we wouldn't smack yeah. the fair. Me and you wouldn't be that. Uh, oh no, that like, like our our, our um, vocabulary up. wouldn't be wouldn't be broad. Wouldn't enough. be fabulous, but we can talk any amount of shit. My mother always said to me, "Don't worry about the books in school because." What did she? <laughs> I don't think she yeah. said that. No, no, no. <laughs> Shh, honestly, she'll tell you this herself. She said college wasn't for me, but she said you'll always do well because you can just talk. And she she made a point to that when I was younger of like, you know, you go into the shop and you talk to the person. Yeah. And now she's the same with Abby. She's like, no. Mm. Like, if she can't do that, at least if she's able to hold a conversation and be friendly and carry herself, sure. that's the most important thing. Which is, oh, which yeah. is, which is a point. You will, you will always get somewhere if you're liked and and you yeah. can you can carry yourself. You get I, some sort of a job. You won't be, you know. Yeah, because I, I was the same. My parents were very like pushy. Talk for mm. yourself, but like I was camping there at the weekend. <laughs> There was children at the campsite and I tried having the crack with them and honestly their reaction made me feel like I was like some sort of like lurking <laughs> <laughs> They were terrified of me. Really? I like, yeah, I was like, oh, that's a nice bike. And they're like, ah. Stranger danger. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm coming full circle on the whole linguistic thing though. What do you mean? Because like, my mother was like, yeah, talk for yourself too. And then it, the more time goes yeah. on. <laughs> The more I'm like, Annie, could you please talk to that person for me? <laughs> <laughs> it's like going full circle. Right? Do you um, ever hear the, the old joke about like the different types of intelligence? And So there's a story of a um, barman working in a bar and he reckons that like he could understand all different kinds of people and could talk to anybody. Right. So this professor type fella comes in and he's like, oh, you'll have a drink. What are you having? Blah, blah, blah. And your man says, oh, I am a professor of psychology. And he says, oh, he gets chatting to him about like, Freud's work on secondary deterioration of the mind and they have a bit of a chat and he professor leaves him a great tip. He's like, nice one. In comes this guy in suit, you know, he's doing like business and they start talking about protectionism and intercontinental trade and he's able to pull it off a bit like, gets a great tip and then, you know, a labourer comes in, he's like, oh, you're pouring concrete and he's talking to him about all that and then at the end of the bar, there's this lad asleep in a pool of his own drool and his hair is everywhere and he's an absolute disgrace and your barman says to him what part of Carlo are you from? <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was a punchline coming yeah, there. It's only a joke but it, uh, we love Carlo really but it's just as you say it stands to you being yeah. able to um, yeah a lot, a lot. it's probably the most important fucking type of intelligence you'll ever get IQ testing this is a heap of shit I just want to go out there and say Maura Texas yesterday wants you to do an intelligence test from Mensa mm, yeah. what made you think we'd be any use at this <laughs> I'll be honest it fucking degre- oh no oh. I've went back on this page now they're telling me to do, the, do the, the Mensa test again which I will not be but I do remember my results ok so none of us qualified for Mensa so you need you need to get 98% mm. in this test to qualify for Mensa yeah I got 49% uh, so hard and, and the one thing It showed up to me was I left like five questions blank Because mm. it just pissed me off I couldn't I couldn't get the answer <laughs> to it um, So I, I gave up But um, I got five of them right The word stuff I was good at So there's different sections mm. There was like oh, One would show a square With like four ticks And then the next would Like turn it upside down And you used to like Say what's next in the sequence Yeah, yeah so that's I was, it I was, No I was crap at that We're crap at that Okay um, And I was crap at the math stuff Yeah and then, but I was good at like, here's seven letters, make a word out of it. Right. There can only be one word. And then there was other words like firm, like something else. And you had to like, give me a three letter word that you put in front of all of them. Yeah. And it was like con, confirm, like yeah. whatever. Oh, I got all them. Okay. But then I was, I was, everything else pretty much went to shit. Anything with maths went very badly. So I got um 49%. Great. Yeah. I discovered what mensa means. Well, table in Latin. Like a round table discussion It's basically where all the fucking geniuses hang out Yeah Mensa yeah. And we did not qualify More, why didn't you ask us to do an IQ test? <laughs> What's Sorry. the difference? Um, with this So that's the kind, kind of exam that you do If you are going to join Mensa Like right. so basically You can pay for it Because I've done this before It's so sad Honestly, sorry, sorry Did you think you, you would qualify for Mensa? Is that why you just took the test? <sighs> Right, okay. Well, oh, yes. Like, Come on, Maura. Here we go. Come uh, on, we've hit no, on something here. It's about 18 or 19, okay? And it's just curious, like, you know. That's confidence. See, yeah, to see how I do. And 
like so you pay something they send you a test and they're like right we've half an hour to do this test maybe more so I did the test sent posted in the results to Mensa and they came, I like I cheated as well I gave myself an extra half an hour like yeah ah. and they came back as like I was in like the top 10% but like it's only like the top 2% that are actually there. So they were like, they were like, so you're, if you're in the top 10%, they invite you to take a test, a proper, like when you're in the exam hall thing. It was like, and like, oh yeah, no, if you want to do that and see if you're good. I'm like, no, I cheated on the first <laughs> test and I still didn't get into like the top 2%. So I'm like, why would I go and do an actual test? And still Because fail. you used your street smarts. There you yeah. go, Mark. There you go. It was a win for you in, 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 oh. in a way. So the, the average IQ, they say, is around 100, between 90 and 109. Yeah? Okay, yeah. All right. Okay. We've got some geniuses here. To score above 130 is very rare, only about 2% of the population. <sighs> what would you do with a genius, like, if you had a genius? like? We've got some college courses here. I think that this is from America, though, is it? Mm. The Which... Uh, which is the average IQ of your major, as they say? So what rated highest at 133 of an IQ was physics and astronomy. One of the boys down hurling was like um, doing his leaving cert. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you're doing all the exams, you know, because you can get to predict the grades. He was like, I'm just, I'm just taking the physics exam. Right. And I just thought, fuck. Oh. I don't know if we can continue to be friends if you're that intelligent. <laughs> I was overawed by it. It's incredible. Physics is so hard. Like. Yeah. And that, like, it's basically like advanced maths, is it? Like Things moving. Be- uh, bet you you've done physics. No, I kind of regret not doing it. Yeah, I reckon you'd have been fucking good at the physics, lad. Uh, so the other high IQs were <clears throat> mathematical sciences, philosophy, engineering, economics, me- chemical engineering, and then. Uh, obviously, m- the likes of music didn't make the list. So, <laughs> I love this in um, in the research. One of the points I picked out here is in 1992, a study found that Kenyan parents yeah. defined intelligence as the ability to do without being told what needed to be done around the house. Very good. That's that is, <laughs> to anybody here, and particularly young people, if you're listening. Do if you you're if you're going getting a job, even a summer job this summer or something. Mm. Fucking do stuff without having to be told. That's primarily what employers are looking for. Yeah. Is initiative. Like that's that's street smart. Yeah. Is knowing what to do and when to do it without some lad having to follow you around and tell you a million times. Oh, if they're looking over your shoulder telling you what to do, they're eventually going to say, Oh, I may as well do it myself. Yeah. Like, but I've worked in so many shit jobs now that like even in the factory, like yeah. if people were too intelligent, there's no point hiring them. What they didn't suit? No. Why not? Because you just need a level of ignorance sometimes in a job. To get through it. Yeah, to get through it, like to, to pull yourself through it, whereas intelligent people are just they're just too intelligent for it. Like. <laughs> they, they they'd run the factory. <laughs> they're not gonna be lugging stuff around the place. Like but I think that I think that is important. Initiative boy. That's the fucking main thing. I like this woman, the world's smartest woman apparently. Marilyn Voss Savant. Two hundred and twenty eight is her IQ. What does she work at? Magazine columnist, author, lecturer and playwright. Wow. Well, that's a fucking waste of IQ. It's <laughs> creative, like, to be a, pl- a playwright, which I thought with that IQ, you wouldn't... Yeah. You wouldn't have the creative juices flowing, but... Well, it's a real mix, isn't it? There's a kid here as well. Yeah. Oh, did you get, did you get the, the Irish lad? Yeah, that's who I want to vote. Ian and Cawley. Yeah. The former Irish child genius, who's now 21, is projected to have an IQ of 263. At eight years old, he was already taking third-year chemistry courses at Singapore Polytech, and by the time he was nine, he'd memorised the first 518 decimal places of pi. Now, that's no use. Do you reckon he played soccer on Saturdays, though? <laughs> Maybe. Do you know what I mean? Like, normal kids, like, if he's at home, like, learning decimal places, like, he's not, he's definitely not getting a full childhood. At the age of 12, he wrote the script and composed the music for a short film called Reflection at Age 12. Not bad. He, he was <laughs> born in Singapore. His dad is from Mayo. And he is regarded as an omnibus prodigy, a child with multiple talents, shows gifts across a wide spectrum. Fair play to you. And there he is wearing a lab coat and those glasses that Bono has. Yeah. So, <laughs> he's got to be 12. Right, what are we taking away from this, lads? I kind of think that IQ... It's a helpful measure, but it's not the ultimate measure of intelligence because there's so many aspects to it and you can't really define 
you can't really compare somebody's IQ to how creative or artistic they're going to be. So, yeah. Look at some of the biggest artists in the world coming on rapping and being like, yo, I'm an OG. And it's like millions of views. <laughs> yeah. Like, is that guy a genius in his own way, I guess? Yeah. Like, yeah. some of those TikTokers look fairly stupid, but they're making millions. So. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 100%. That's the type of genius. Do you know who's got emotional intelligence though? Mammies. Yeah. You know, when you're sick. They know like, everything. They just know putting a tea bag on your eye. They've got a sixth sense. Yeah. Mammy sense. Mammy sense. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But uh, I'm, look, I'm not shitting down on anyone who's intelligent. Good. Book smart. You know what I mean? That's like, I think that's last. And, I, and look, I do think y- you will get to the street smart level later in life. But I'm saying street smart for a kid growing up at 15, 16. So fucking important. Okay. So important. Johnny Smacks is going to do a video on how to be street smart. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. It should be part of a transition year program that they just show kids. This is, this is listen, wise up, it's going to be called. <laughs> Fucking wise up to the world. Yo, Johnny, I'm Johnny Smacks. Smacks. About to tell you. Today, we, I'm about to tell you how to be street smart. It was funny, though, I was looking at some of this intelligence stuff I was reading and, like, they were on about studying and shit. Like. Yeah. Did you read this one about Blur? Can I just tell I this one before the, we wrap well, this well, up? Well, they started with that listening to Mozart improved your test scores. Yeah. Right. Then, no, I should have tried that, you know, back in the day. And then research conducted in the 1990s found a blur effect where kids who listen to the Brit pop band Blur seem to do better in tests. In fact, researchers found that the blur effect was bigger than the Mozart effect simply because kids enjoyed pop music like Blur more than classical music. Hey, lad, imagine you were listening to Richie Cavanaugh while you were studying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you now, you now have an ag science degree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Writing about New Holland combines and stuff, you yeah? know? <laughs> no, I know and, and, and thanks to whoever pulled up this Here you go This is what street smart is I couldn't find the words earlier on Because I wasn't intelligent enough The stereotype of a street smart person Is someone who knows how to handle practical situations In everyday life necessary to get things done But it is not as inherently educated or gifted academically That sums me up Okay, well can people send in their examples of street smart? Yeah but who's buying and selling you? And yeah. how are they doing it? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Okay. Or really, really book smart people who you found to be totally inept at normal life. Yes. And, and if they're celebrities, even better. We'll read it out. <laughs> Change your names. Don't worry. Hello, hello, everybody. Thanks so much for listening. If you haven't heard, we've moved exclusively to Spotify. So if you want to hear the rest of this episode and all future episodes, just download the free Spotify app on your phone or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Type in the Two Johnnies podcast and enjoy it. Thanks so much, lads.